We do work in genomics of uh, infectious diseases generally. This institution is uh, seven years old. We were founded in 2013. We work in very close collaboration with the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. And as such, when the first COVID or the index case of COVID-19 happened in Lagos, NCDC felt, you know, that with the capacity and then the resources available in Escape, that they should send the sample here for further, you know, verification or further confirmation and sequencing. And that's what we did. So we got the sample from NCDC and within 48 hours, we were able to not only reconfirm, but also sequence the genome, that we were able to elucidate the genetic makeup of that virus. So, and that was the first genetic makeup of SARS-CoV-2, not only in Nigeria, but the whole of Africa. This is our sequencing platform, and this is where we carried out um, our, the first index case um, whole genome sequence for COVID. And this is the machine, which is the MySeq FGX. This is the machine we use to sequence the, um, the first genome, the first COVID genome from Nigeria. And basically, we wanted to know like the arrangement of the nucleotides in the sequence in the genome of the COVID, of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And, and that was why we carried out this sequencing. My own area is I use computational tools to, to understand biological data. So once we got the uh, sequence of the virus, so we then tried to understand where, or which part of the world was this virus imported from? Was it an importation from the US, from, from Europe, from China? And we were able to confirm that uh, the, the particular the, the, the sequence of the first case was most related to samples from Italy and other parts of Europe. So that was how we could actually confirm computationally like that it was an importation from Europe and not from the US or China. Before COVID started, Myself and my collaborator at the University of Cambridge were working in, you know, on a trivalent vaccine for Lassa fever. Lassa fever is endemic in this country. So we're working on a trivalent vaccine. That va trivalent vaccine has a monkeypox backbone on which we cloned Ebola and Lassa fever. So which means that this was a vaccine that we're going to elicit immune response to three different pathogens. And that vaccine was way, way, way advanced when uh, COVID started. And by the way, the vaccine that I'm telling you that we developed is also based on genomic sequences. Because if you don't know the genetic sequence or the genomic sequence of an organism, you cannot develop diagnostics, you cannot develop therapeutics, you cannot develop vaccine. You need to understand what it is. And because we have the ability to sequence the viruses. So we had a large number of viruses that we sequenced in this lab, not elsewhere, here. And we had an ab the ab we have the possibility to look at the, you know, the landscape of the virus. We knew, and then we have a program, a machine learning system program that help us to develop the first diagnosis that I told you about, the first va um, vaccine for Lassa fever, that we were able to map the different areas of COVID-19 that could fit into our vector and that can elicit the adequate immune response. So we use our algorithm, and it is a computational-based system, computational biology system, identify the areas, and then what we did was to take those and clone them into the same vector that we had had for Lassa fever before. But what we did at that point is actually to take out the Lassa fever component, to take out the Ebola component, and then we were left with COVID alone. And because we do not have a BSL-4 facility here, we did not send the samples outside. It's just genetic sequence, identify the areas that could make sense to elicit immune response. We told our colleague in Cambridge, here, this is what we have. Can you put that in the animal model over there? Because we don't have the laboratory, the facility in the country to do that. Can you put that in your animal model and then tell us whether it is protective or not? And that's what they did. So part of the work we do is working towards making a vaccine for COVID. And the key emphasis here is that we don't want to be a passive player in vaccine production again, in global vaccine production. We want to bring something to the table. 
And we are not owning the entire technology, but we just want to be active and show we come, we bring, we are bringing something to the, to the table. So for the COVID vaccine, because of our strength in the, our sequencing platform strength, so we generate the sequences from Nigeria and also across the continent. So what we did is the, the collaboration we already have in Cambridge, and they already have a technology that can manufacture vaccine with a quick turnaround which was done for basically Lassa fever. So when COVID happened, then the technology was moved to COVID. So all we did is that we moved all the sequences we generated here to Cambridge. So they can then um, what do you call, use this sequence to generate vaccine that is tailored to the COVID um, strain that is in circulation in Nigeria. So it's no longer you design vaccine and bring it to us. You are using the strain that are circulating here to make this vaccine. And it's been successful in designing this construct. So what is a DNA? based vaccine and what we've done now is having provided this sequence can be using their technology to manufacture this vaccine and then we run the clinical trial here. I can tell you the collaborators, Professor Hini at University of Cambridge, they already got money to do the phase one clinical trial in the UK which is ongoing now. So our own part now is we are waiting to also get that vaccine to run similar clinic, phase one clinical trial in Nigeria. And once we get a go ahead and get good um, immunogenicity and safety data, we'll then also fast track it to a phase two clinical trial. So the key thing is that we are providing the sequence, we are supporting the technology, and then we also support the clinical trials in Nigeria. Those are our contributions.